Every year around draft time, I realize I just don't have time to get to the day three guys that I want to get to. So I have put you all up to the task with a giveaway. You told me all of your day three draft crushes, and I'm going to get through as many of them as I possibly can. Welcome to the live podcast. You like that on three, one, two, three. You, like it! you are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I am your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. You can find the show on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. The show is available anywhere you find your favorite podcasts, including YouTube and even Amazon Fire and Roku. Just download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app on those smart TVs. Thank you so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day every day. And a special shout out to my hashtag everydayers. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NFL60 and use the code NFL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Today is day three day. This is a, a sort of an annual draft time tradition on the Lockdown Vikings podcast. It's the giveaway, all right? Kind of a giveaway. I am going to donate 20 bucks to a charity of your choice if you are right. You sent me your predictions, and sometimes it's your draft crutches, for who the Vikings are going to take on day three. I got a huge list in front of me, so I'm going to rip through them as fast as I can. Not a ton of time to dilly-dally. I also have this uh, football card that I got from the Carl Eller store. I bought a thing from the Carl Eller store, and it came with this football card that I don't really want. So if you want it and you, you, you're you right, if the Vikings pick your guy on this list, I'll mail this to you. Just uh, tell me what you need. Um... I'll also make a $20 donation to a charity of your choice. Uh, if multiple people get it right, the card goes to, I don't know, the latest pick. <laughs> like if you get the seventh round pick, you know, that I think that's cooler. Um, and the, but I'll, I'll make a, a donation to as many charities as I need if y'all get it right. I've got 47 players here. Uh, if you Missed the call for submissions, it is too late. I'm not taking any more. I've closed the uh, the thing down. Also, I would have to spend like 20 seconds a guy to get through all of these <laughs> in the time of this podcast. So there's a good chance I don't get to uh, talking about your guy. I just have this listed alphabetical by first name. So uh, if I didn't get to your guy, don't worry. I still got him down as part of the contest. Um, so let us begin. The first one comes from Squirt Wonderstone. Great username. Uh, who gives me Andre Iosevis. Uh, who is a Princeton wide receiver. He's a small school guy with uh, four four three speed, so he's kind of a speedster. Might have gotten into a bigger program if he wasn't from Hawaii. Like, the geography made the recruiting pro process really weird for him. Um, so maybe there would have been a little bit more to him, but then he ends up going to Princeton, small school. But there are some, like, legit toughness questions, not only because he's a small body, but because there's apparently there are some times where you wonder if you put it all into, like, run blocking and stuff. Um, I have him as a high sixth. I guess I will do just some like basic grades on these guys. Most of this is just kind of stolen from other scouting reports. I'm, I'm drawing heavily off of Dane Brugler here, the beast. If you have an athletic su subscription, go check that out. Uh, and then occasionally like Lane Zerline or uh, Jordan Reed or the draft network or PFN. Um, all these guys are doing way more comprehensive work than I ever can. So I'm kind of drawing off of them for people that I haven't actually been able to, you know, watch and come up with my own uh, real research on I can kind of draw off the community. Brian gave me Andrew, Andrew Voorhees, a USC offensive guard, solid guard, six year player in college, used the extra uh, pandemic eligibility, um, wrestler, total weight room guy, not majorly long. So sometimes guys can kind of get into his frame and that can cause some problems, but there's a big injury deal with him. Um, he's coming off an ACL among other injuries and he also can kind of get bad pads. So when a guy gets into him, he can really, uh, get lost there. I have him as a low fifth kind of on those medicals. Um, I think if it weren't for that, I think he could have been more of a high day three, maybe even low day two kind of guy, but you got to be a little bit worried about, is he coming back off of that, that ACL problem and other injuries as well. Derek McCabe gives me on for any orgy. 
uh, linebacker out of Vanderbilt, who's a very good, like, high motor kind of linebacker, but sometimes he's, like, only motor, where he can overrun, get in the wrong place, or he can get folded up by an O-lineman at the wrong angle, um, and I think the major thing is that he's just got to read and, like, trigger faster. He is actually a fourth for me. Um, I think that he's somebody that might be able to actually rotate in, or at the very least, you know, hopefully get in on special teams, be a backup. You know, if you, if, if for me as a fourth rounder, if you make the team all four years of your rookie contract, you did okay. I think that's a good fourth rounder. Even if that guy's depth and never plays, I'd, I'm still fine with a fourth rounder because, you know, you never know when you're going to need the depth. So taking depth, but then not ending up needing him is like, that's, I don't think that that value is, I'm not bugged by that. Like, you know, I buy car insurance too, you know. Uh, Connor Strunk says, Anthony Bradford, offensive guard out of LSU. Another one of these big, nasty LSU guards to maybe pair with Ed Ingram. Um, he has some experience outside as well, but I think he did his best at guard. But that also, you know, hey, in a pinch, you can move him to tackle. You don't necessarily want that to be plan A, but that flexibility can only be helpful. Um, he can get a little bit leany, though. He can kind of get too much power into guys, and he's got a little bit too many bad habits to be uh, like an, an anointed starter or anything like that. He's more of a potential kind of guy, but those bad habits might never get broken depending on how his first couple years go. Um, you know, if he stays healthy in camp or whatever. So there's always that risk. I do have him as a fourth round pick. Again, a guy that I think could be like a swing depth for you for as long as you want. That's, that's valuable. Skull page gave me Brian, Byron young uh, edge out of Tennessee. Um, you don't, he doesn't really have like the physical presence that you want in terms of length and then just like power and oomph. But another guy that's like his twitch and motor, um, the thing is he doesn't have a great counter repertoire. I think he needs to be really polished before he's a true contributor. So there's a little bit of assembly required to get to like a low ceiling guy. So this is definitely like a deep day three, like a low fifth round pick. This is like, you know, right in the middle of day three, perfect day three guy for me. Um, but I, I don't have many expectations of him you know, becoming the sneaky contributor. I think he can be a rotational guy if he learns the right things. Um, Mir Gondo gave me Cam Jones out of Indiana, a linebacker um, who's a kind of small but smart and a very knows where to go, but can he actually get there? And will he be able to stack up and shed? This is a big Flores thing. If you can't stack and shed a block, I, I don't even know if you're going to be on the board. So I don't see this guy being a Viking. Um, but hey, you know, who knows? Once you get into day three, you're, you're willing to let go of a lot of your principles because like whatever, everybody's bad at something down, down here. Uh, Coach Brad gives me Chandler Zavala, who is a very interesting, he's a big, tough guard. He's it's got short arms, but on the interior, that's not as important. He's a little bit impatient, but mostly he's going to fall in the draft due to medicals. He tested like crazy, but he's got a bad ankle that we, we that was kind of a big worry at NC State. Um, and that actually hurt a little bit of his pre-draft and stuff. Um, but I think if you're okay with the medicals, this dude, I actually put a third round grade on him because I'm not that worried about his medicals, especially considering that, um, you know, he tested well and that might be more of a short term issue and don't. That, you know, the draft is a long-term decision. Don't make, don't let short-term things affect your your long-term decision making there. So I actually have a third on him, and I, and I wonder if he even makes it to day three. That's the thing about this contest. Uh, you do not win if your guy gets taken in the third round. That has to be day three. And uh, if he doesn't get drafted at all, but he comes in as an undrafted guy, also doesn't count. Has to be a draft selection on day three. Um, draft dabbler. Gives me Charlie Jones, a wideout out of Purdue. Another 4-4-3 speed guy. He's got decent ball skills. And I think he's got a, a future maybe as a gadget player, as kind of a rotational, give him a jet sweep kind of guy. Um, maybe get some special teams in there. But he isn't polished enough a route runner to be like a true every down wide receiver. I'm curious to see if you can get him in as like a returner or even just like a punk gunner and, and you know, just go do that special teams dirty work. Um, Casey Coolis. I, oh, I have a, a seventh round pick on uh, Charlie Jones. I, I you know, you, it, when you're kind of just a 40 time <laughs> and, and you have to work really hard to just see what the role is or you have to imagine him completely reinventing his game. I'd rather just take that dude uh, in the seventh round or maybe even not not draft him at all. Casey Coolis gives me uh, another Charlie, Charlie Thomas out of Georgia Tech, a linebacker who's given me a lot of tweener linebacker safety energy, which I think there's a place for in the Flores defense. I don't think the positionless thing is, is really that much of a problem for the Vikings, so that's okay. And he knows what he's seeing, he knows where to go, but he might have some trouble in the box because he's just kind of a slight build. Um, maybe tops out as a rotato player, um, and he might even play around like 200 pounds. So this is very much 
a uh, a Chaz Surratt ish pick, which I put in like the low six. I think you're you're happy if that guy makes the team for a couple of years. Um, God, I have so many more guys to get. There's no way I get to all of them. So I'm sorry if you picked a guy whose first name starts with like T. I'm probably not getting to it, <laughs> but I'll do my best. All right. But before I do that, I got to tell you about what Built is up to. Built Bar Protein Bar that tastes like a candy bar, all kinds of delicious, totally degenerate flavors. But if you know how they work, they'll often just like release a new flavor. And it's usually like the crazy, it's like the cookie dough or like birthday cake puff. These flavors that just are dessert. But they're not dessert to your body, just to your taste buds. It's low in sugar, low calorie, low fat, chock full of protein. Um, covered in 100% chocolate, absolutely delicious, cheat day without a cheat day. And and these flavors come out in like limited edition. You have to go to the website. So April 22nd, they are releasing a new flavor. I can't tell you what it is, all right? I, I don't know all the details, but you're going to want to pop by that website Saturday, April 22nd. Go to built.com and be one of the first to discover what all this hype is about. Make sure you use promo code LOCKEDON15. You can get 15% off of that order on the new secret flavor at Built. Dot com. Thanks so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. Next week, we'll have Mock Draft Monday and Twitter Tuesday as normal. We'll have a couple more. We'll have the like a whole quarterback board and a whole uh, cornerback board. And that will actually take us right to the draft where we will be live on the Locked On Vikings YouTube channel. So come hang out during the draft. Come chat. I won't be like rebroadcasting it or anything. I can't do that. But we can come chat and react to things together. So please come hang out. Um... Let's move on with this absolutely ridiculous episode that I that I always bite off way more than I can chew on. I'm on like guy eight. I got 47 to go. Let's keep it going. The better Luke, I beg to differ, uh, gives me D Winters, linebacker out of TCU. Uh, another kind of like motor guy. He's a, he's a quick trigger motor linebacker. Good angles, good range. Um, he can get pulled out of position, and I think he's sort of in that fast but wrong it sounds like stage where he can sort of get pulled the wrong way. He can trigger on something really fast, but then overrun it. Or maybe he's just reacting to the wrong thing and runs himself out of position. Um, and you know, traffic can eat him cause he's a little bit smaller. I think he'll have to be a special teamer to make the team, but that's okay for a day three guy. So I put a high sixth on him. Uh, Justin rash gives me DeMarvian overshone. A whole bunch of people love overshone. I, I like overshone as well. Um, he's another kind of linebacker safety tweener with more experience at safety, but he's now kind of more bulked up for linebacker. So there's a little bit of rawness there, but also the overlap between those two positions is like the principles are the same. So it's not like you're teaching him something totally new from total scratch. Um, and I think he is a core special teamer, like at his floor, which means this dude's going to be on your team as for as long as you want. And that means I think the floor for him is the fourth. I've got a fourth round grade on him and that is expecting kind of like his worst outcome, which I don't really have a reason to expect his worth out, his worst outcome, but I like as pessimistic as you can get on him is a fourth rounder. And I think that that makes him a pretty sweet prospect. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go day two as well. Um, he's, he, he's just learned so many positions that he's kind of raw at all of them. So there's just a lot of assembly required. And I think that there's reason to believe that maybe he does top out as a core special teamer, but Hey, there's a place in the league for that. There's absolutely no shame. I take that in the fourth round sketch. Conk gives me Deuce Vaughn. Ah, hashtag my guy. You did it. I love Deuce Vaughn. He's running back out of uh, Kansas state, Kentucky, Kansas state. Kansas State. I was going to get the K states mixed up. Apologies to the residents of those states. Um, okay, he's five foot five. He's literally like a mouse, and I love it. Being a, a short running back can actually help because it lowers your center of gravity, and sometimes that makes you harder to tackle. But yeah, like there are times when he, I mean, there are times when he, he would go out as a lead blocker and actually blow a dude up. So like he plays, like nobody tell him that he's five foot five. He has no idea, but he's a tiny dude, and people are really worried about his longevity and stuff. Um, look, I think he can be absolutely be a contributor to a running back committee. And I think he actually fits what the Vikings could use in their running back committee quite a bit with the juice that he has. I have a fourth round grade on him, which is pretty high for a running back. I'm a big Deuce Vaughn guy. Uh, get quack and gave me Devin Witherspoon <laughs> out of Illinois cornerback. Well, I think he's going top 10, uh, but you do you. <laughs> We've talked about him a lot on this show. Uh, Skull Network gave me DTR, another hashtag my guy. Dorian Thompson Robinson, quarterback out of UCLA. I did a whole episode on him, so I won't go too deep into him. Um, he's His limited but not catastrophically so arm is what's going to make him fall, I think, lower than he should go. But he runs out there like Justin Fields. It's really cool. Uh, Kraus Terrific gave me Evan Hull, a running back. He's sort of a straight-line battering ram. 
not that explosive, but you know, he'll, he'll pick the right gap and he'll go launch himself through it. Um, very much loves the dirty work kind of guy. So maybe there's a place to go on special teams, but unfortunately he was really frustrating on special teams with missed tackles and, uh, also frustrating in pass pro. So I'm not sure if that's the kind of guy that makes a team. And I don't know if I want to spend a draft pick on him. So he's the first one here that I actually have an, I wouldn't draft him grade on it, but Hey, if I'm wrong, the Vikings take him. Uh, we can go to a charity of your choice. That's the whole point of this. But yeah, it doesn't seem like the kind of guy I'd be interested in as a running back. I think you need to check more boxes than that, especially as a day three guy where you got to be good on special teams to make the team, you know, um, Ty Chandler. It. Skull Squatch gave me Ivan Pace, linebacker out of Cincinnati. So a lot of you people liked Ivan Pace a lot. Um, Skull Squatch got to him first, but Ivan Pace is a very popular guy, I guess. He's very small, but energetic, kind of plays like it. Like he sees the field, but he he's not long. He doesn't have the body to really be able to stack and shed stuff. So it's it's a matter of I see where I'm supposed to go, but can I get there? Uh, and he's also a little bit too inconsistent in coverage for me to feel that excited about him. I have him as a low fifth as kind of, you know, he's your day three flyer. Let's just throw this guy on the on the roster and see what he can't do. But somebody I kind of wouldn't be surprised to see ending up on a practice squad his rookie year. Uh, Le Corvosier gives me Jacorian Bennett, the other Maryland uh, cornerback. You know, Deontay Banks gets all the attention, but the other guy, 4-3 um, four, four, speed guy, he overreacts versus underreacts, which I think the opposite is better. I would rather see players underreact than overreact. Um, and he's also got a little bit of a size issue, and that'll work against him. But hey, I actually think this dude, it sounds like this dude can kind of play. I got a third on him, and I, and I feel okay about it. Um Tyler Forness, what's up, buddy? Gives me Jaron Hall, quarterback at a BYU. I'm actually, I think I'm going to try to watch him before I do the quarterback uh, actual full ranking next week. So uh, I'll, I'll put a pin in him for now, but it seems like he's kind of a spotty accuracy and a very, very reckless quarterback, which can sort of make really cool plays, but also lead, led to a ton of turnovers. And there, I think there's also some injury stuff with him, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I have a high fifth on him and I think that he'd be a fine, like day three. Ah, oh, we missed out on our QBs. Let's just bring in this kind of flyer type and see if we can learn, teach him to be responsible type of guy. Neil Scotland gives me Jonathan Mingo, a hashtag my guy. He blocks like a tight end, but I think he plays wide receiver like a wide receiver. Uh, I think he's getting underrated because of the way that Ole Miss does offense. I think hid a lot of his talents which they had to do to hide the deficiencies of the quarterback. That's my read on that situation. I might be reading it wrong, but I'm really high on Jonathan Bingo. Um, I have him as a, like a firm day two guy, but if he falls to day three, he totally could. A lot of people disagree with me. So maybe for more on him, uh, I actually have two episodes. I, I talked about him yesterday on the wide receiver uh, rankings episode. And also as a day two target, I think last week, um, Masatron gives me Kayvon Merriweather who is a safety out of Iowa, a versatile downhill safety, but there's like a bunch of issues on tape. He sets his feet early and kind of jumps early, takes bad angles. He doesn't get off blocks like you would hope. And he's a project with kind of only fine athleticism. You know, if I'm going to draft somebody that's got that much work to do, I want their, I want him to be like a super cool athlete. And he's a fine athlete, but just a fine athlete. So I have him as a seventh round pick. Uh, maybe even, you know, you wouldn't draft him at all. Brandon Warren gave me a very interesting one. Kayshawn Booty out of LSU, the wide receiver. There's like character stuff. That's kind of the big deal with him is, you know, Brian Kelly was like calling him out at LSU. There's like some weird stuff going on and you got to kind of see if, if that's really about him or if he was just the object of somebody else wanting to spread a bad rumor or whatever. Weird stuff there. Um, he's got just okay size, but plays bigger than it, except he doesn't have the catch radius to do that. He plays like he can, he can get through guys. He's got the physicality, but he's not boxing out, getting big catches and stuff. Feels like very much a day three guy, even though he was kind of a, a first round dude. Cause he also didn't test the way you hoped he would test for what you saw on tape. So I actually have a low fifth on him and it's like kind of a flyer thing. And you got to make sure if you, you got to make sure he's even on your board at all just by looking at that into that character stuff, which I have not done. I can't speak to it, but that's sort of the narrative. Um, boy, I still have about half of these to go. We'll see how many I can get through here. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out at the Locked On Vikings podcast. We got a lot more. Moving right along here on this day three extravaganza episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast. I'm going so fast through these guys, and I'm so sorry. I can't. I want to get like, I want to spend a whole show on all of these guys. You know, I, I, I love um, really getting into a lot more depth than this, but I'm trying to sort of cast a really wide net at both for charity and because the contest is fun, but also this is sort of my best way to get 
familiarized with day three players um, versus, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be the kind of guy that can watch 300 guys and put through, put out a, a, a draft guide. That'll never be me. So this is going to be my way to get to dudes that I just didn't really have time for and get at least a little bit of cursory familiarity. At least let me get what the reputation is, you know, uh, Jordan Barrett gives me, Oh, no, sorry. PDX toffee gives me Keaton Mitchell running back out of East Carolina, uh, who's a track star, got a lot of shimmy, but he isn't going to bowl you over, doesn't have the physicality that you want in, in sort of the phone booth, and also it seems like he's really keen to bounce everything outside, which is a classic young running back thing he'll have to learn. Um, I don't really know a lot about him on special teams. It seems like it, you, you wish he did more on special teams, but correct me if I'm wrong there, but he'll have to do special teams to kind of stay on a team for long enough to learn what he's got to learn to be a viable part of a running back committee. For me, that's a high sixth. You know, Assembly required to become a rotational player, that's a high sixth. Uh, Jordan Barrett give, gave me Marte Mapu, a, a Sacramento State safety. So a very blue collar guy, small school guy, which sometimes can be a good value play because people will just drop him down the board going, I don't know if he played against good competition, but you got to look at why he ended up at that small school. Was it because he was a one star recruit or was it because like with um, with the, the Princeton receiver, like it was he was in Hawaii and recruiters didn't come out to him. Like maybe he was actually the secretly great guy and people just didn't look at him. You know? So there's something to look into there that I'll look into deeper if the Vikings actually pick this guy. Um, but for now, blue collar, kind of a safety nickel hybrid type, which is nice. The, he's got that versatility. Um, he does his homework. You can see the film tape, the film study, and he's a hard hitter. He'll pop you. I, I think something that's really going to hurt him is that he's coming off a pec injury. And so he couldn't do like any testing. So he could be this really cool matchup guy, but there's sort of this unknownness to him of like, Hmm, can he hang with, with better competition? Is that injury going to be okay? So there's those questions, but I feel okay about the answers to those questions. I'm putting him in the third, but if those, if you don't feel good about the answers to those questions and you probably have them way lower, uh, Southern school has Matt Landers, a wide receiver out of Arkansas, who is a six, four, four, three, seven guys, so really cool athlete. But unfortunately he was kind of just go long and that was kind of his job at Arkansas. And I guess there's some immaturity concerns that need to be looked into. So I, I guess you got to work that out, but Hey, the body itself is worth a camp invite, maybe a seventh round pick. Um, but with that much investigation to do and kind of all you really have is a 40 time and, and I, uh, I, I don't have a draftable grade on him. Uh, Jake Beaver gave me Mike Morris edge out of Michigan. Um, sort of a long langly, lanky gangly, uh, edge rusher with a good body. He plays very reactively, but not like slow reactively, but very much like he's not predetermining a plan. He's reacting to what you're doing, which is sort of the, the level you want guys to be at. Uh, but apparently his lower half athleticism leaves a lot to be desired. Kind of a twiggy frame underneath, the, like below the waist. And uh, you can kind of see that he struggles to generate the power you hoped he would generate. And that would just put a ceiling on him unless you can get him to like do a lot of squats and really build that up, which I'm not sure you can really rely on that happening. So I have a low fifth on him. Uh, Cy N gave me Mo Ibrahim, visual runner. The, the running back out of Minnesota, I know a lot of you have loved him for years watching him as a gopher. Most people just talk about how he's old and, and hurt. Um, he's got injury concerns that I think are real concerns. And also, I think he's going to be like 25 or 26, ton of tread on the tires. But he's smart. He's visual. He'll he'll pick the right gap, and that can make it so he'll always be able to be part of a committee. I would definitely would not mind him in like the high sixth, as long as you're okay with him being healthy. But I think you got to wait until you're late enough in the draft where um, you're not gambling too much on him. So he might not even get drafted at all. Uh, and you might just bring him into camp and just say, all right, well, now you just get to make the team. I didn't have to spend anything on you. Uh, Basque gave me Mo Mohamed Diabate, uh, linebacker out of Utah. Also, I'm so sorry if I mess up someone's name here. I'm going at light speed. Uh, he is a, a linebacker out of Utah, sort of another gangly, rangy linebacker. But for a guy with that much length, I wish he could stack and stack and shed a little bit more, get off blocks a little bit more. But hey, he'll get into pursuit. He'll chase you down. He's very much a, uh, you know, pursuit kind of rugby player like that. Um, I have a low fifth on him. Thursky gave me Nesta Jade Silvera, a defensive tackle out of Arizona State. He's our first DT, I think, right? Uh, a couple of you guys gave me DTs. He plays at like 308 or so and has a really stocky build, which is, it's like a little bit lighter than you want to be, but that low center of gravity, um, you, you still get a little bit of quickness and you get a little bit of power. He doesn't have really much of a pass rush game, not like a pass rush with a plan thing. Um, but Hey, 
he can, oh, and he can get uh, lured out of his gap a little bit some, but that can be a rotational player. That can be okay. Rotational knows that'll be a, a high fifth for me, maybe even a fourth. I actually like that guy as a day three guy. Uh, Lil Iceberg gave me Noah Sewell, linebacker out of Oregon, brother of Panay, um, five-star athlete. He was a huge recruit going to Oregon, um, and he's, he's very stout and he's a hitter. His range is like fine, but the more ground he has to cover, the, the worse it can get. Cause a, the range can get exposed on like longer pursuit situations. And also, um, there's mistakes that, that can be made when he has like that much more to read. And sometimes he can get pulled out of his gap. Adam new gave me Olu Oluwatami. Uh, offensive center out of Michigan, very heady offensive center, but small and doesn't generate the power. So if you liked Garrett, if you want backup Garrett Bradbury, uh, kind of that, I mean, that's a really common problem for centers and a lot of teams just put up with that for center. So it might not bug teams very much. He knows where to put himself. He knows how to get himself between, you know, the ball and the defender. Um, but you know that he lacks power and he lacks lateral quickness in a way that I'm not sure he's going to be a great fit for the Vikings. He can get his pads shocked a little bit. Um, just maybe doesn't have the physicality you want in the trenches there. I've got a low sixth on him. You know, you kind of hope maybe he can make the team and be a backup for you. But if he doesn't make the team as a, as a sixth round pick, you're okay with that. Uh, Chad Lesser gives me Owen Popo. Popoe. I'm so sorry. Uh, linebacker out of Auburn. He is a sub four, four athlete linebacker, super, super explosive but he's undersized and he overruns. He's just a missile point and shoot. But if you point the wrong way, he doesn't really have um, a lot of ability to like sift through, get back into the play and he can be wrong. But you know, you're, you're doing the, the fast and wrong thing a little more. He also has a bunch of minor injury things that teams might be worried about. I am not particularly worried about them. I have a fourth on him. I actually really, uh, I, I like that as a, as a rotational player. Yeah. Just give me a bottle rocket where I can just point him and shoot him. Uh, Connor Weatherall gave me another hashtag. My guy, Rajon Wright, cornerback out of Oregon, long, lanky, slender corner experience in zone end band match. He's just a little reckless. He's a little bit of a choppy tackler. He's a little bit grabby and, and those things are a little riskier than I think he has to play with the body that he has, but he's a lot more polished than a lot of these corners on this list. Honestly, um, he didn't test due to a thumb injury. I, I think, that might be helpful to him. I don't know if he has the the greatest athletic uh, profile. I think testing might have hurt him. Um, but I still like him as a fourth round corner. See if he can't be a backup. Uh, Stu was the guy who got to Riley Moss. I, like seven of you said Riley Moss, but Stu got there first. Uh, he is a corner out of Iowa. He posted a bananas three cone and you can totally see that like explosive short area quickness. Um, I think he pushes it a little far. He might be a little bit too confident, which as a corner, like, isn't the worst problem. I'd much rather somebody be too confident than less confident. Well, I don't know about that actually. Cause you know, you'd, you'd rather let a, a pass happen in front of you because you were playing too far off than let a guy, you know, get behind you cause you were playing risky and now it's an explosive. Um, so he, he can push it a little bit far and he can overreact and stuff. There's a little bit of, I, I guess, catastrophe potential, um, and I think he has to be a backup until he develops into more. I wonder if with that three cone and with that particular athletic profile, you can make him a returner in the meantime. And that's where he, he finds his way on special teams. But I also like, if you just get this dude as a gunner and just make like, get it back, like cover kickoffs and make the team somehow until you can learn to like chill it out a little bit. Uh, not Edmund. Give me Roshan Johnson, the other Texas running back. He was kind of the thunder to B. John Robinson's lightning. Um, he did was a dirty work guy. I, I think there's a lot of Madison in him where he'll thump you and um, he'll he'll do a lot of that dirty work. He led lead blocked in two back situations sometimes for B. John Robinson. Um, I have a high fifth on him. Oh, by the way, I have a fourth on Rajon Wright and Riley Moss. I would actually take either of those guys in the fourth. And then, yeah, high fifth on Roshan. Um, Alexander the Dane gave me Scott Matlock, a D-tackle out of Boise State. Very interesting guy and not somebody that I think a lot of people see getting drafted at all. He's sub 306 foot four. Really weird body to put up front and in the middle. Kind of intriguing as a pass rush specialist to maybe be able to use that length. But when I'm looking at DTs, I usually like a little bit shorter and stockier for like center of gravity reasons. But hey, um, he was a, a, a he could like maybe be a rotational pass rush guy. The thing is, he just didn't produce that much at Boise State. So it's like a weird body and you didn't see it work in college. Do I have a reason to think this will work in the pros? It's worth bringing him to camp and seeing what he's got. I don't know if I'd spend a lot on him, a seventh, but I think I'm going to actually give him uh, 
an undrafted grade. I, I don't think I'd draft him. Uh, Michael gives me Serv- Servosia Dennis, a uh, linebacker out of Pitt. Big-time leadership figure on that Pitt, that Pat Narduzzi defense. Um, he's, again, small, but knows where he's supposed to go. I, I don't think he's a good enough block shedder again. I think that's going to be something that probably turns the Vikings off to him. But by the high sixth round, which is where I'm going to put him, you, you become a lot more forgiving of that stuff. How many more of these guys can I get to? I want to get to like three more. I want to get to Starling Thomas. He, he comes from Gilbert, uh, a cornerback out of UAB. He lives in a very forgiving world because he ran a 4-3-8. When you're, that, when you're that fast, you get recovery speed, you can screw up, you can get back into the play and it's okay. But he has some technique with his footwork to clean up and he can get a little panicky when the ball is coming. So even if he does get in phase, you can still get problems there. Um, and I think that that stuff has to be worked out. You just can't live on the recovery speed thing unless you're like Trey Wayne's fast. You can't really live like that in the NFL and even Trey Wayne's, you know, I mean, obviously there were problems there. Um, Stetson Bennett is the next one. Comes from Danny's Dart Daddy. Love the username. <laughs> quarterback out of Georgia. Look, of course he's a winner. He won the championship two years in a row with Georgia. Um, but look, a lot of years, a lot of time to develop and he's still getting like a heavy play action kind of handholdy training wheels offense, spotty accuracy, a little bit of a smaller frame. That's going to bug some people. And sometimes he holds on the first read. Is it real? Is he like this total clutch winner guy? Or was he just sort of like papered over by a team with all the elite recruits in the country and, you know, was dunking on dudes five years younger than him. That's kind of what it feels like. I, I have a uh, high sixth on him. Um, I think he's probably more like a backup quarterback and I think there might even be stuff he has to do to, to reach the heights of backup quarterback. So not a big Stetson Bennett guy. He's another one that I want to actually like watch. So maybe I'll come back on, I think Wednesday or Thursday when I do the quarterbacks with a totally different opinion. Uh, Eric likes quiche gave me Sidney Brown, um, which is very interesting. He's part of this like insane Illinois secondary. He might go day two. I don't know if I love him. Uh, that much. Um, he's sort of a box slash slot slash safety, um, which can be really useful that, that versatility, but he's, he's a box safety. Um, and he's a physical kind of violent guy, but he's a little passive in the pass game and he's a little bit undisciplined and un- uncontrolled. I, I think there's an assem- assembly required. And I think he ultimately is going to end up as a sub package guy in the league. So I don't know if I love him as a day two. I've got more like a high fifth vibe from him. Like he's a day three. Let's see if we can get this guy into our sub packages and we'll be happy with him. Um, but I think I'd be too worried about him disappointing me as a high fifth. Um, man, I got so close. I got within like eight guys. So I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. Um, you know, we got Terrell Smith out of Minnesota on here. We have Xavier Hutchinson. I He might go to round three. Yasir Abdul on here. Trey Palmer. Uh, yeah, we've got some, some interesting names. I, I did get them down though. All right. I'll just read them off. Tariq Bracey, Terrell Smith, Trey Hawkins, Trey Palmer, Troy, ba- Troy Brown, Xavier Hutchinson, Yasir Abdullah, and then Zach Pickens was the final one from Joshua Brooke. Those are the guys I didn't get to. Sorry. I, I just can't go that much longer. Um, but I do have them down and I do have, uh, grades and stuff on them. Um, but if, if the Vikings take them, it counts and all of that stuff, but I, I, I won't be able to break them down on this show. We've already gone a little too long. So, uh, next week, again, mock draft Monday on Monday, we're going full hog, no restrictions. No, I can't pick that guy. Cause I've talked about him too much. We're just, let's, let's see, optimize. What do I want the Vikings to do in this sim, um, Twitter Tuesday. So make sure you've got questions ready for that Wednesday and Thursday. I'll talk about the quarterbacks and the cornerbacks and, and rank the whole class. And then we're, we're there. We're live. It'll be draft night on Thursday night. And then we're just talking about that. I will be doing shows by the way, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, to talk about the previous day's events and even one on Monday morning to talk about the undrafted class. Uh, so this is eight shows in a row. And then I'm going to take a couple days off to presumably sleep for like 36 hours straight. <laughs> so make sure you come hang out on locked on Vikings, locked on Minnesota sports going to be doing some, some fun stuff as well. Super excited for all of that. It's here. It's, it's draft week just about next week. Draft week is, is coming. We, we made it through. So get excited. And come hang out here on Locked On Vikings. I will see you all next week. And as always, Skull.